sewer shark. I almost don't need to say anything else, do I? It just sounds horrible, doesn't it? I mean, wouldn't you just feel sheepish about putting this game in the machine like Sewer Shark? Really? The, the sewers are not a cool place to be. I mean, they're full of shit. Real shit. Nobody wants to wait around in shit. Super Mario was a plumber, but you didn't see him tromping around knee-deep in sludge with a game called Super Sewer Adventure, did you? You never used the Wiimote like a toilet snake, and you never saw the Ninja Turtles in a game called Sewer Shenanigans. Plus, the sewer level is always the lamest level in any game. I don't get it. You don't understand. I, I can't go down there. I hate sewers. They smell like poo gas. Anyway, Sega started including this game with the Sega CD, as if they knew they couldn't sell this game with a title this bad. Could you imagine trying to talk your mom into buying this game for you, or bringing it up to the counter by yourself and retaining any shred of dignity? It'd be like being forced to buy tampons for your sister, or renting a Steven Seagal movie. This is the kind of game you'd lump in with a bunch of other stuff so the clerk just wouldn't give you that... <sighs> look. But uh, chances are, if you owned a Sega CD, you either played Sewer Shark or Price Fighter in the store. Price Fighter is actually worse than this, but Sewer Shark is way, way funnier. See, Microcosm represents the other end of the spectrum, the most boring FMVs ever made, but Sewer Shark? Woo! <laughs> this game makes no fucking sense, but near as I can tell, the characters in this game are trapped underground in an endless planet-wide labyrinth of pointlessly winding sewer tunnels infested with overgrown radioactive monsters, and they work as exterminators flying a rocket ship called the Whole Hog through the tunnels at ludicrous speeds, killing all the animals they see with a Gatling gun. Apparently they hate it when Minox chew on the power cables, but they don't mind someone shredding the place with a minigun. It's best not to ask too many questions about this, I guess, but I still wonder what I ever could have done to piss everyone off on my first day. Your co-workers are douchebags, man. Hey, listen. I hear they're putting you in with ghosts today. Now that's my main man. He's Free super fly. To ever shoot the tubes. Give him your best stuff, and he'll keep you flying. Maybe all the way to Solar City, huh? Man, she's so tense. Ah! Showtime. I'm Falcon. Ah. You'll be hearing from me. Switch to decaf, lady. Hey, I see Starbucks picture there. Ah. The sewers, punk. It's Bill Paxton. The guy you're replacing, he had that same tough guy smirk on his face that you do. This guy is all Tell up in my grill, know. man. They're out there now, blotting him up with handy wipes. <laughs> the ghost here. I always come back for more. Hoo Well, bye now. Let's go, ah. Ricky. Doing that. Take a deep breath, rookie. Um, no. Ah, <laughs> don't you love the smell of the sewers in the morning? They smell like victory and poo gas. This here's the whole hog. You. I took her apart and I put her back together again. No matter what they taught you up a top rat. Top rat. Ain't worth scrap. I got some stuff in here. Strictly legal. Hey. But it just might keep you off the wall. Stop yelling at me. Now until you earn a better one, your call sign is Dog Meat. <laughs> Alright, climb aboard, Dog Meat. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something to say that could possibly make this funnier, and nothing is coming to mind. Oh, you know, this was John Dykstra's breakout directorial debut, you know. Time for a video about sex education, Crash Dog and Meat. Burn. Crash and burn. The sewer jockeys come and they go. But down here, this is the hole. This is Sewer yeah, Shark! I name. Guess I had a slide with your new name prepared in advance, a dog meat. And a reason to live. Like Whitman, Prass, and Haddad. You're gonna owe me big dog meat. And what's my payback? Oh, here it comes. A million pounds of tube steak. I have That's no idea what this guy is talking about. Shot. You nail this one run, and we got a one-way ticket to Solar City. Maybe you're good enough, dog meat. Good enough to Let's do find what? Out. Why am I here? Hey, Captain! What the hell is that? You dirty little... Whoa, I'm working real good now, Mr. Ghost. Oh my gosh, what is that ugly thing sitting in the pilot seat? Oh, what, the Captain. robot has a problem with me too? File. A robot puppet? How lame is that? What? Oh, well, heck, they're dead. Hey, Vern, those pilots are plumb dead. Something down there sucked their brains out. <coughs> Coordinate. Oh, well, not another bug hunt, Mr. Ghost. Bug hunt? That's my line. Dog meat. 
catfish needs a trip to Solar City worse than we do. Like the awful dark and scary down there, Mr. Ghost, and it smells terrible. It smells like poo gas. <laughs> Pretend it's a game. Maybe it'll even be fun. Kinda doubt it. Check ya! Dog meat! Man! Big man frightens me. Catfish the ghost. We got a target acquisition down here. Oh my god. Uh -huh. Okay, so the game looks pretty straightforward, right? There were a lot of games on the Sega CD like this. In fact, most of them. You're shooting stuff in front of an FMV. It looks a little like Microcosm or like Rebel Assault, and I figure the basic object of the game is to shoot stuff on the screen before they shoot you. Easy, right? <laughs> Wrong. You absolutely have to read the instruction book to know what to do in this game, because the game doesn't tell you anything. I mean nothing. And if you don't know what you're doing, you will die and die fast. The first thing you need to know is that you can steer the ship. The question is, where should you go? After dying a lot and not knowing why, I finally caved and read the book, and it says the robot will call out directions to your destination. But at first I was really confused, because the robot will shout out things at you like this. We got some hungry critters bearing break, rider, break. Now, at first I thought he was warning me not to go in that direction because there were a ton of monsters there. But you're always supposed to go the way he says. Now, if you forget one of the directions or you go the wrong way even once, you die. There's a small chance the game will forgive you early on, but for the most part, there's no room for error. Cool. Don't let him freak you out! Now, the directions are random every time you play, but the game plays out exactly the same way every time, regardless of the directions, so there's basically no replay value except to get a high score, which the game doesn't save. Another thing I noticed after a while is that the monsters don't even hurt you until much later in the game. The first half is just you blasting helpless rats and bats with a Gatling gun. And tell me, how is this a Gatling gun? They don't even fight back. The game plays them up as being super scary and deadly, but they offer absolutely no resistance. What did these things ever do to us? So I figure, fuck it, why bother? If the game doesn't care, why should I? Well, it turns out that the game does care, because at several points in the game, you're blindsided by FMVs of your boss in Solar City who yells at you if you don't kill enough stuff. That was one lousy run. Why should I waste, uh, waste? That's a municipal fuck that's such an obvious boondoggle! That's it! You're a boondoggle! What in the... I need a drink! Ah, and today's... Look at those totals, dog meat! They look reconstituted frog slime! I'm shipping you back to flight school! See how you like flying a desk, squat brain! And just like that, the game is over. You have to start over from the beginning. And the instructions say nothing about this, by the way. So even though reading the instructions is essential, it still doesn't tell you about half the things you have to do to avoid dying. So, alright, if they want a body count, they got one. I start playing through the game with my thumb pinned to the trigger, and I'm actually having one of the better games I've ever played when suddenly... a hey, Dog Breath, or whatever your name is. That was one lousy run. The, it failed me again? What do they want from me? I had to go online to look for hints. It turns out that all the game really cares about are the Radigators. I was focusing more on the bats, I guess, because they just keep coming back and there are a ton more of them. But no, it's just the rats. Again, something the book says nothing about. But that raises another problem. I'm playing through the game when I notice my energy level is getting really low. There are a few recharge stations throughout the game, but one never comes up here and I die. Start over. What I didn't realize was that your energy drains a lot faster when you're firing, which I suppose makes sense, but again, it's another thing the instructions don't fucking tell you. There are two ways to go through each recharge station, but only one gives you more energy and it's marked with a green light, so you have to be fast to get to it. The instructions also give you the impression that the recharge stations are optional, which is a fucking joke. If you miss a recharge, it's a death sentence. You might as well just wait it out, or reset the game. The only way to make it if you do miss one is to not fire at anything, and if you do that in the first half of the game, you won't get a high enough score to pass the fat guy, and if you do that in the second half, you'll just get killed by the monsters, so I guess the only advice is don't miss. Here's another thing I guarantee will kill you whether you read the book or not. You'll be flying along just dandy when all of a sudden, boom, you explode. Game over, what the fuck? You have to keep watching the hydrogen meter along the bottom, and when it gets red, you have to mash the button so the robot fires a flare and detonates the gas pocket ahead of you. But why is it hydrogen? Isn't it normally methane in a sewer? 